my brother priests and deacons and seminarians. And by the way, isn't it great that so many of our pastors came to be with us this weekend? Let's show our appreciation. I was wondering, I know that probably the last two nights you didn't get eight hours of beauty rest. I can tell by looking at you. <laughs> but I was wondering, did you notice how the gospel began this morning? That young lawyer took a lot of courage. He asked Jesus a question. And what did Jesus do? He asked him a question back. Well, I've been, I was in school a long, long time ago. But I was always taught you couldn't answer a question with another question. But the Lord did it, so, wow, I guess it's okay. I wonder if my teachers ever read the Bible. <laughs> Thinking about that, I think I know the answer. But wait, but wait. If Jesus asked you a question about the Bible, would you be able to answer as well as that young lawyer? Why? Do you know the Bible well? Did you read the Bible from cover to cover in the last year? Ever? Is there anybody here who's read the Bible from cover to cover at least once in their life? Put your hand up. Praise God. The rest of you have a lot of work to do. The buses will not leave until you've read the entire New Testament. <laughs> Well, something very interesting happened in today's gospel. The Jewish scribe, that young lawyer, he quoted Deuteronomy. And he wasn't carrying a Bible around with him. He just knew it. And what did he say? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I asked a group of rabbis one time, I was giving a talk, and I said, that phrase... Would the Jewish, uh, the, excuse me, the Hebrew word be better explained to love your neighbor as another self? It becomes more powerful, doesn't it? Well, Jesus tells him when he responds, you got it right. You're quoting the scriptures exactly. Thumbs up for you. You've summarized the whole law. I'm sure he's feeling pretty good about himself, as any of us would. And then the Lord says something that none of us should miss. He said, do this, and you will live. And you know what? That wasn't just meant for that young lawyer 2,000 years ago. This Sunday, in the United States, in Springfield, Missouri, with the Bishop of Springfield here with us, it's meant for us. Do this. Fulfill this law, and you will live. In other words, thirst for the one who died for us on the cross, and allow God to fill that important place in your life, your soul, to fill it with his love. Why? Because filled with the love of Almighty God, we have some hope that we will serve our neighbor well. The Lord gives us that powerful example of the Good Samaritan who based his actions on the law that was in his heart. His response came from deep within him. And he did something to serve a fellow human being when there was nothing in it for himself. Rather, he served the needs of this poor man because he was so in love with Almighty God. He wasn't even Jewish. He was a Samaritan. And yet God was working in his life so powerfully, perhaps how God was working in your life this weekend, that he couldn't help himself. And this parable leaves no doubt about who our neighbor is. It's anyone who needs help, be it physical, feeding the poor, visiting the sick, sending letters to those in prison, sheltering the homeless, just to name a few things. Or perhaps it's spiritual, praying for the living and praying for the dead, forgiving injuries, converting our friends to Christ through our own witness. I was at a conference. I know there's some people here from South Dakota. Where are you? I was at a conference out in Rapid City 
when I was the bishop of Sioux Falls. And this fellow was head of booth. And I walked by and he said, I've been mad at you for 10 years. I said, that's funny. I've slept really well for the last 10 years. <laughs> and I said, but thank you for bringing it up today because I'd like to apologize. I don't know what it was I did to offend you, but I am sorry for it. And sometimes to be a, a good neighbor to another is to apologize to parents, to brothers and sisters, to friends, to teachers, why maybe even our pastor. We need to do that, but it only happens when we have some understanding of how close Jesus is to us right now. And if you think about that, if Jesus seems far away, this is your lucky day. Because I'm going to share with you a prayer I'd like you to say. Jesus, come into my heart and into my life. It's just that simple. Say it quietly to yourself. No one will know that the Lord was far away from you today. Jesus, come into my heart and into my life. But there's another thing that you have to do. You have to count the cost. Because you see, following the Lord, living his word, close to him in the sacraments, that's going to set you apart. You know as well as I do. A lot of your peers don't live that way. And they're not going to be comfortable with you if you live that way. Count the cost. But what's the reward? If we count the cost and live this way, allowing God to fill our soul with his love and fill with that love, being the face of Christ to others, we have the gift, the reward of life with God forever. Now, there's a tremendous saint, St. Maximilian Kolbe, a Franciscan priest who lived during the time of the Second World War. And he was at one of the Nazi death camps. And one prisoner had escaped, and so they lined up all the people who were still there. And the fellow in charge of the place said, 10 of you are going to be executed because that one escaped. And they pulled him out of line. They just went down, picked this one and that one. And one of the men began to cry, to weep, because he was the father of a family. And so Maximilian Kolbe stepped forward, this Franciscan priest. The commandant looked at him with disgust, and he said, who are you? He said, I am a priest. OK, you can take his place. The other guy, get back in line. And they put him in a cell where they starved him to death, a very, very painful death. There was nothing in it for him. He simply so filled in his heart and soul with the love of Jesus Christ. He became the face of Christ to that man and to all the other prisoners. And he died and became a saint. But there's a mission for all of us as well. And I'd like to ask you three questions and I'd like to ask you to respond. Oh, I know. It's Sunday morning. I had to get up before 11. <laughs> well, I got up at 4.30 so I could get here. So I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> but here's the first question. And that is, are you willing to take home from this weekend what you've learned? And are you willing to be a disciple of Christ? Yes. That was kind of feeble. You know, I'm 72, I guess I'm going to have to keep working. Are you willing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Yes! Are you willing to make regular use of the sacrament of penance, to receive Jesus' mercy and his forgiveness, choosing to live your life according to Christ rather than the values of our culture? Are you willing to open your heart to Jesus Christ's love for you are you willing to make frequent use of the sacrament of reconciliation? Yes! Will you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> will, will you discover Jesus' love for you by receiving him in your heart and in your life through the word and sacrament by being a disciple who commits himself to Mass every single Sunday? Yes! I hope there's no liars in the group.
Thank you for doing that. The face of the young church needs to be seen in our parishes across this nation every single Sunday. But here's my prayer for you. As we gather here together and as we celebrate, my prayer for you, the prayer that I offered in preparation to be with you, is that God's grace is poured out into your lives and your hearts with great abundance. That God's grace and the action of the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. That you'll be disciples for a lifetime. That as you receive our Lord weekly in Holy Communion, adore him in adoration, and enter into union with him through a prayerful life, that God will richly reward you. And no matter what comes your way, you will have the courage to be the face of Christ for others. Amen. There's one uh, group I really like to congratulate and thank as I close this homily, and that is the youth ministers and those adults who have come as chaperones. Would you please stand so we can thank you? Now, the reason I did that is I want to know who you are. And you just heard him make a commitment to be at the Eucharist every single Sunday. If you're worried about anybody who said yes, get my cell phone number before you leave. If there's any trouble, call me. I will fly to your destination. And I will give this homily again. God bless you. <laughs>